Hello and welcome to tutorial number five. This is Dibarethwin Arbenlo from Second Life. Today I'm going to be teaching you how to create nighttime or moonlit effects on your photos for Second Life. This also works for non-Second Life photos, but as usual my videos are geared towards Second Life users. This is extremely simple to do, so it shouldn't take very long to explain. We're going to take a photo. I already have this photo from the arcade that I did in September that I'm going to do this effect on. Uh, for your interest, this is a pixie cat dress with a pixie cat harness, uh, pixie cat kitties, pixie cat chair, tableau vivant hair, pink fuel skin, um, death row designs, furniture, death row designs, wooden pentacle thingy, aisling, uh, rose pentacle on top of it, and I have Ibby's Storyteller's Burrow Rare House. So we have a background, and you can do this on green screen photos as well. Once you've removed your green background on a green screen photo, you can do this on the layer there as well. I'm going to duplicate this background. So I'll right click it, and I'll duplicate the layer. You can rename this if you want, but you have no obligation to do so. So now I have a new layer, and I want to change the levels of the layer. So I'm going to pull up the Levels menu. Control L will pull up the Levels menu. If you don't want to use shortcuts, you can also go to Image, Adjustments, Levels. It's in there. I want to change the channel to blue. It's blue! <laughs> okay, so I will move the gray and white arrows all the way to the top. So it's going to create this super blue highlighty effect. So this isn't what we want, but this is how we get to where we want. So now that I have this blue layer, I'm going to have the blue layer selected, and I'm going to go to my blending mode, and I'm going to change my blending mode to multiply. Instantly I have a moonlight nighttime effect. Not every photo will have this instant success. Depending on the colors in your photo, you may find that it's too blue or maybe it's too light, and in those cases you may need to do some additional steps. If you find that it's too blue or maybe not enough blue, you can hit Control U or go to your Image Adjustments menu and pull up Hue Saturation. Control U is the shortcut key. And then you can saturate and desaturate your image, your blue image, as much as you want. So if you want to be a little bit less nighttimey, you can desaturate it. If you want to be more nighttimey, you can saturate it more. It will only saturate so much though because we've already increased the blue so much. Okay, ours is pretty nice, but maybe we also want to change how dark some parts of it are. So we could actually use levels to change the layer. Control L, pull up the levels windows to change the layer to darken parts of it. So this black, the black arrow up here, if I pull this down, it starts, you can see it starts to darken what I'm doing. So if I pull it down, I can create some more darkness effects. Maybe you don't want to pull it down too much because it starts to be a little unnatural, but if you pull it down just a little bit, here's the start, pull it down just a little bit and you got some more darkness. But now it's too blue. So like I said before, control U we go to the hue saturation menu, desaturate a little bit of that blue. So now you have what's basically an instant darkness effect. You might use this if you want to take your photo in a really high clarity of texture. Like I've mentioned in past video tutorials, sometimes when you use the wind light settings with shadows, it can muddy some of the textures or it's difficult to find a shadow that doesn't, um, or it's difficult to find uh, a moonlight that you like. There's all kinds of reasons that you would need to do this. Or maybe you even just took the photo and didn't realize you wanted it to look like moonlight. So if you need to create this nighttime or moonlit effect, you can do it just this easily. In just a couple steps, you now have a photo that's ready to go. That is the end of this tutorial. It was a real quick one. So if you have any comments or questions, you can leave them on YouTube, or you can send them to me on Plurk, or even in Second Life, if you'd like to message me there, that's totally fine too. 
If you have suggestions, you can do the same with your suggestions for videos you'd like to see in the future. Thank you for joining me, and I'll catch you next time.